I'm going to call the order, call the meeting to order at uh, 712, uh, April 15th. Um, Diane, uh, do you want to call roll? I mean, you can see us, so I don't know. I hear you all, Mark. Yeah. You can always see us, but. No, we should still follow OMA. We need to. Yeah, okay. Go, call roll. Okay. Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Diane? Here. Patty's running late. Linda's running late. Tim? Here. Sue? Here. All right. So I don't have, uh, usually there's a script that uh, I have from Susan, but I don't have that at this point. So I am going to fumble through a little bit. So you're going to have to bear with me. Um, so the next order of business is the approval of minutes. So do I have a motion to approve the minutes uh, of the February 19th, 2020 um, regular board meeting? Motion. Diane. Diane motion. Uh, uh, Karen seconded. Okay. Um, do we not want to see the pledge? No, well, we're even bypassing. while we're sitting? No, I don't, I don't have a flag. I'm not going to say Pardon me? No, we're bypassing that. Well, if you, I'll say it for all of us. I mean, it's part of our meeting. Yeah. It's not essential. Not actually on our agenda. No, it's not on the agenda, so. Okay. Right. Okay. Could um, I, could I ask who made the motion? Was it Karen? Uh, uh, Diane. Diane made the motion and Karen seconded it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, does anybody have any uh, issues with the uh, minutes? No. No. Okay. Uh, Diane, you want to take the... Uh, Karen? What? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Susie. Who do we have coming in? Susie. 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 Okay. It's just me. I just... I'm helping Patty. All right. Oh. All right. Uh, Susan, did you have any public comments? I do. I have a comment from Steve Yassel. He says, hi, Niles Main Library Board. Hi, Steve. I, I am concerned that this board will not discuss or pass any tax abatement or tax levy reductions this year. I think it is a discussion that needs to be had among our board in good interest for every taxpaying resident in Niles and Main Townships during this time of economic hardship. Not only should these topics be discussed, but action on both will be very welcoming to relieve the burden of every other tax that our residents are still expected to pay, regardless of the decline in activity across many institutions. I highly doubt the baseline operational costs during this time max out or exceed the current budget, nor do I believe it will dip majorly into the emergency funds. Please consider cutting residents a break this year. We all need more faith in our elected officials carrying out what is best for us, the very ones who placed you on this board to execute decisions in a bipartisan manner. Thank you for your time as always. Signed, Stephen Yassel. Thank you, Steve. Any other public comments? Any Can questions? I ask a question? Was that a pre-submitted um, public comments or did, yes. are they just Oh, are, are they going to be coming in through the meeting, do you think? No, they, they needed to be submitted before the meeting, or they can speak if they, if Tim calls on them. Oh. Does anybody, oh, there's Patty. Hi, Patty. Patty. Hello. Patty, sir. Okay. Um, is there anybody who's waiting to speak for public comment that we know of? Uh, question. This is being recorded, correctly? It is. Correct. correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, just audio, though, not video. No, it's both. Okay. Oh, you know, listen, listen, I don't wear my tuxedo. <laughs> ah, got it. All right, uh, uh, Susan. Are there any? Is there anybody online that wants to speak? I am not seeing any hands. All right. Oh wait, wait, wait! I'm on the wrong thing. David Carabata would like to speak. Ah, David Carabata would like to speak. So, do I unmute him, or do you unmute him? I am unmuting him now. All right. Trying to unmute him. It's so, not letting me. Susie, can you do it?
Hello. There we go. Aha. Oh, Dave. Hi. Uh, good evening. One of the uh, concerns I had that I had sent in was the format of the public meeting. Looks like you're overcoming a lot of my concerns. One was I was under the impression from the changes that it was going to be more like a webinar, something just to view where one can participate. And you're proving that not to be my, uh, not to be correct. There is public participation, which is great. Um, as far as uh, Maine Township, we're doing the same thing with Zoom, but we also have a little flag that we wave in the front. Uh, our clerk produces it, and and we say the Pledge of Allegiance by putting our heart hands over our hearts. We also have a trustee that has a full floor base flag in her home, and she puts that on as we say the pledge. We've had about three to four Zoom meetings already uh, this last uh, April and end of March. So maybe some polish there, but the Pledge of Allegiance is extremely important. And I would really hope that sometime during your meeting, you would actually say this pledge today. Um, as far as what's going on with the uh, coronavirus and all the challenges people are having these days, it brings up, uh, again, certain issues such as uh, the administration and staff should not be creating budget requests, their budget requests without board direction. Uh, the, um, the abatement for taxes, uh, again, should be considered. I know there was one, uh, the uh, tax levy in the, uh, for July 1, 2019 to July 30th of 2020, the uh, levy there, there should be some form of abatement coming back on that. We need to freeze all capital asset purchases, including roof replacement solar panels and freeze all hiring for one year. We also need to decrease the 2021 budget of operating costs to further reduce the 2020 levy. We also have passed at Maine Township two uh, resolutions addressing the coronavirus 19 issues that are uh, plaguing all governmental uh, bodies. Uh, I'd like to see that Niles Main Town uh, Main Library do the same. Um, let's see if we can get the burden off the taxpayer because there's going to be a lot of people now that are out of work. And again, um, these matters really, really needed to be addressed on an emergency type basis. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Susie. Uh, do you have Linda's phone number by any chance uh, by you? I have. But yeah, I, okay. can, I can try to text her. Is she having issues? Yeah, she, well, she just called me on my cell phone while we were talking, Bob was talking. So, okay. um, so I will do that. Uh, Let me, um, I'm going to mute David again, and uh, we'll see if we have any more. The, oh, by the way, one last thing. Hello? Yes. One last thing. Okay. Um, the, the resolution tonight that authorizes the administration payments of expenses without board approval, really the board has got to take its power. You have that responsibility. You have to utilize that power. You, you cannot simply proxy that away. So the board should be involved and be uh, uh, someone that makes these determinations. There shouldn't be any spending at all that's not reviewed and approved of by the board. You know, it's also affirmed by way of a uh, seminar that I attended this afternoon from noon to one o'clock through TOI, Townships of Illinois, that say that, look, what we, what we do is we actually audit. We have to audit and watch those funds. We each have individual responsibilities as that as board members. So I would uh, raise challenge to that proposed uh, uh, resolution. 0.0-01. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Oh, crap. Do we have anybody else, uh, Susan? Um, no hands. Nope. No hands. Carolyn? I'm getting a text that someone sent Susan an email, um, but now she says she's on her phone. You don't see her? Who? Um, what's her name? Uh, Myrna. Oh, Myrna. Um, well, I, there's, yeah, if she's on the phone, I don't know that she has a way to raise her hand exactly. What is her phone number? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know either. Um, 
Let me see. I, I don't usually call. You have her number there, Carolyn. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. I don't usually call her. If you just go to her name on your text. I am. That's what I, yeah, I'm not, I totally know how to do that. Thanks. I just unmuted the phone caller if you want to try to talk. Oh, okay. That's not her phone number. It's not on this call today? The phone number I see, well, it's not the one I have, but I have a cell. She could be calling you from her home. But if you... Is this person able to talk? If you are dialed in by phone, do you want to try to talk? Yeah, maybe it's not working. I okay. Phone icons uh, on my screen. Are those people who are trying to call in? Those are people no, who are joining the meeting by phone. Uh, there's two attendees um, by phone, and uh, they're both 847 numbers. I um, allowed them to talk, and... Um, do they need to do something on their end? Maybe they can't hear us. I'm not sure. I don't know what to do. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Myrna said she sent an email. Can you check your email and just read it? I'm sorry. There it is. Yeah, she sent it four minutes to the meeting time. Okay, here is what Myrna says. Hello, Sue. Hopefully you'll be able to read this at the library board meeting tonight. Hello to all. Hopefully you are faring well during this most unusual time. I have a few comments that I would like to address. First, I heard that the library board has not been meeting during the COVID-19 outbreak. Is this true? The rest of the companies on the face of the earth are all formally meeting constantly in order to make sure that the business they run are prepared for the present as well as for the future. Now that our president and governors are talking about opening up the country, where does the Niles Main Library stand? My next concern is that I've heard that Susan and her staff are working on your 2020-2021 budget request. Is she receiving direction from the board? If there are no meetings, I am sure the answer is no. I have a concern because costs seem to be going up each year. What kind of direction do they receive from the library board? How's the board ever told Susan to keep the budget the same as the previous year or to decrease it? Just wondering, during these times, I would highly recommend that the library board asks her to look at decreasing costs instead of increasing. I'm sure it can be easily done. My final and biggest concern is the resolution that you are considering giving Susan unlimited payment authorization. Wrong on so many levels. Susan is a very bright person, but that is not her job. That is yours. Let's all be honest here. Most of the board has a very liberal viewpoint about how money is spent. I do not want things purchased or paid. They do not have the approval of the board and they cannot be discussed out in the open. To give one person all of that power is outrageous. It's not like the world has totally collapsed that Susan needs to be given this emergency power. In the era of telephones and computers and webinars, there is no reason that you cannot be a functioning entity. What is the point of having a board if you are so freely willing to give away your job roles? Thank you for listening, Myrna Zalesny. Are we done? Sounds like we're done with public comment. I think so. Okay. All right. Very good. I thank everyone for commenting. If anybody else can hear us or for posterity, thank you so much. Um, next item on our uh, agenda is our chargers report. Uh, Patty, do you have something for us in this meeting? I'm sorry. I, I was having a hard time getting on my web page. So um, from the from the library, so I didn't get the stuff I normally get. So I was going to ask Greg if he could please go over the stuff for this month, and I'll make sure I can handle it next time. Yeah, no problem. Um, I have it right here. Okay, so uh, we're uh, we're through the end of March. That's nine months. Uh, so we're seventy five percent through the budget. Um, as of the end of March, we've collected all of the uh, revenue. We're at 101%. Sa uh, salaries are running just a little bit uh, under at 73%. Uh, 
uh, library materials are running under at 69%. The um, library operating expenses are running at 52%. Um, general and administrative expenses are under at 67%. Um, employee fringe benefits are under at 69%. Utilities are running at uh, 71%, and special reserve is at 10% of uh, what we budgeted. And then uh, uh, building and equipment maintenance expenditures are at 56%. That's it, any questions? Um, I have one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Carol. Um, it, would it be possible in the future to have this treasures report included in our packets so we can see it in advance and we'll have it. It's to you, Patty. I, you know what? It, Greg is the one who gets the figures together. I, it's up to Greg. I, I, you know, I don't, and plus the packet comes by way of the library, so it makes more sense if it comes through Greg. Right, I'm not asking Patty to do it. I'm asking the administration to provide a copy for all of us as well. Just put it in our packets. Patty, no, I understand, but it's Patty's, it's the treasurer's report. So it's, it's Patty's decision or Patty's ability to either control it or not. Patty, if you, you want to work with Greg to do that. That's yes, I'll okay. work with Greg on this. Thank you. Yeah, it I... needs to be done through the, through the treasurer. Yes, uh, Karen. I, you know, it just seems like we already have this information. I mean, as I look down the income statement, I, I can see, you know, how much of the income is there and how much we spend on salaries. And usually the Treasury's report is sort of highlights that information, uh, you know, and draws our attention to it. But the information is already there. Uh, I mean, you can see looking at those income statements, what percentage of the budget we've reached right now with various expenses and the income. So. Uh, again, the Treasury's report is sort of a nice highlight of what's already in the packet, but I mean, the information is already there. Yes, Carol. So are you saying we should have the Treasury's report include more specific information or no, not no, I'm do saying it at it's all? Already there. It's already there. It's already there right in front of us. You know, know what, Carolyn? Yes. When I look at the paperwork we, norm we all get, what I look at is the year to date and the year budgeted. And I know, it, I'm well aware of it. I'm well aware of how you put I know it because you used to be a treasurer. Right. But I didn't, I didn't I didn't follow I didn't follow that format. No, Carolyn did not provide a written report during her time or or no, so because I highlighted specific spending and percentages, not just right. what was there. I did a lot analysis but that's fine so you don't want to include it I'm saying for example now she didn't have it we could have already seen it again she highlights certain points that's why she types it I, I agree it is in the um, it is in our packet our in a regular budget but maybe we should just exclude it then. Uh, I'll talk to Greg and see what we can do about that okay for the next meeting I just, just want a suggestion to thank you I just want to interrupt for a second and say that I think Linda is now on the call. Um, oh. Linda, Hi, Linda. I see you. Hi, <laughs> I don't. It's okay. All right. Thank you, Susie. Nice. We are all here. Oh, wonderful. All right. Very good. Thank no. You very much. Pretty okay. So uh, we have payment of bills. Um, uh, again, I don't have my. Uh, if you hear Mark the barking, Susan, mute me because my idiot dog is trying to get my attention. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Right. Can I make a motion? All right. Uh, uh, I'm. Hello. I'm talking. Yes. Okay. Can I, uh, can I make a motion? Well, I was going to make the motion. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, make the motion of the payment of bills for months of February and March. Uh, Finances of. $331,313.40. The payroll expenses of $587,472.61. Special reserve expenses of $2,970.23 for a total monthly expense of $921,000.
So uh, moved. Second. Karen makes Linda, you seconded it? Yes, okay. Karen made the motion, Linda seconded it. All right, can we have, uh, well, has anybody got any comments or questions? I have one question. Sure. Um, on page seven, um, miscellaneous for, I think it's $557. Page seven? Page seven? Page seven is the uh, income statement. Okay, so we're not going to, so what checks compose that? I, I couldn't, I went down the checks and didn't see that amount. Is it more than one check? I'm trying to, I'm trying to match that expense to the checks. So you're trying to match not the, a valid uh, question. You're trying to match the five hundred and fifty-seven dollars. Yeah, is that, that's an expense for this month. It's miscellaneous. I just right. want to kind of match that to checks in the check register. So, like what? What's the category for? So, uh, miscellaneous. Uh, all the expenses on the income statement include both uh, February and March, because uh, even though we sent out the February statements. Um, you, you didn't review it because the meeting was postponed. Well, actually, I did review it, but thank you. <laughs> you didn't review it. You didn't review it before. The meeting. Yeah. You didn't review it in the context of the meeting as we are now. Right. So when we put okay. the you know, statements out, that's, uh, you know, that included both months. What you right. have to do is you'd have to, starting on page uh, 16, I believe, um, you'd have to find the um, items that were actually charged to miscellaneous, and that would be the components of that specific uh, number. So miscellaneous, is, is that vague? We don't know what items actually we earmark for that budget line? Uh, the thing that stands out in my mind uh, is that we, uh, I believe we charge our Iron Mountain charges, which is for off-site storage. But I thought Iron Mountain was a little less. Well, remember, it's two months worth of expenses. Okay, if you could please email whatever this miscellaneous charges to me, like whatever invoice it represents, I'd appreciate it. Then I can make a notation. If you look on page 21, check number 78733, uh, is for 24854 uh, uh, off site storage miscellaneous. Okay, and I would bet if you looked, uh, if you looked at the last half of that particular document, you'd find a similar charge for off site storage. Okay, but if you could still email that to me so I we can be yeah, sure it is exactly that. And then I had, um, I had another question and actually um, it was for Iron Mountain and I'm showing, I think it's $308.73. So does it change every month? We did uh, have to retrieve some documents from Iron Mountain for I believe a FOIA request that you had made, Carolyn. So that's why the monthly charge varies? Yes. There's okay, a flat so, charge for what we're storing, and then, but then when we have to bring documents back from it, we are charged for that. Okay, so that, that would be another reason why I'd rather see the documentation for that miscellaneous. So what is the, so this is obviously a monthly charge. What's the average monthly charge for Iron Mountain then? About 250. Is, can you get me the exact amount rather than an you know, a, a guesstimate, would you, could you send me something to show that amount as well? Because this is something I am interested in. Because yeah. I think the other month it was 248.54. Is that why you're saying you think about 250? Yeah, that's, that's the average monthly. So it's 248, that's good enough. Okay, that was my only question. Okay, uh, anybody else have a question? I think Patty wants to talk, but she's- Patty. Moved. All right, go ahead. She needs to be unmuted. Okay. There she goes. Okay, you're good. 
Hi, Patty. Okay, yeah, my dog is laying down now, so she's not barking, so I don't need nice. to be here. Okay, uh, Greg, um, my question is, since Susan said it was extra, you pay extra for every FOIA, is it a certain amount for each FOIA or depending on how much information you have to pull for each FOIA that you have to pay extra each month? So um, what we pay on an ongoing basis is for Iron Mountain just to hold our stuff. Anytime we transact, anytime we pull a box out or we put mm -hmm. it back in, then we're charged on either end of that, you know, probably a delivery fee and a, you know, and, and a, a so forth, and a pickup fee and, and so forth. Um, I believe it varies on the amount of material. So if, if we had to pull 10 boxes or 15 boxes or something, the charge would be higher. In this case, I believe we only pulled one box. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I just ask a question regarding that statement? So for the documents I requested, you actually had to pull a box and search through it to locate them? Is that what Iron Mountain does for us? Uh, yes. They hold, they, they hold all of the past years. I thought it was a dial-up database. No. No. It's, it's just a physical storage place? Yeah, think of the uh, storage. No, I understand it. But when we, when, we, when we spoke at the last meeting, you said it was dial-up. I don't believe I said that. No. Uh, I, no. And it's a and it was a database. So we don't these uh, these oh. documents when we talked about our inventory aren't even on a computer. They're in boxes at Iron Mountain. Am I understanding this correctly, Carolyn? I did not represent our relationship with Iron Mountain as uh, as being a database. Where are our documents stored for our invent for our capital assets? When we were discussing an inventory process, what what did what were we told is the location of that storage? So we have we have some records in an access database which we have locally, and we have some uh, some records as part of uh, Blackboard, which is our uh, financial software. So Blackboard is the database that has information that we were discussing regarding inventory, correct? Yeah. Yes. And then the documents I requested, which were, I think, um, repair invoices, yes. were, are not part of the database, but in an actual box? You asked for the invoices. You didn't ask for a printout or a record. Uh, you asked for the actual invoices. So we, uh, according to FOIA, we are obligated to produce the actual invoices. I know, and my question is, so our invoices aren't stored on a computer, they're in, a, in an actual box in a warehouse? That is correct. Okay, I just wanted to get that straight. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, any other comments, questions? All right, Linda, you're gonna have to speak up if you have anything because we're not getting a visual on you. Where'd she go? I know. Okay, great. I was moving around. Um, Diane, you want to take the uh, Karen? Can you hear uh, me? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, Carolyn? Uh, uh, no. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Kim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. Uh, Susan, you want to? So your director's report wasn't Sure. Can I ask one more question before the director's report? Please. I'm 100% sure because we already made that vote, but go Oh, ahead. no, it has nothing to do with the vote. It's just I'm, for clarification. Is that a, a possibility? Yeah, what do you need? I know we're in this um, pandemic mode and we're paying bills and a lot of it's for programs. Do we pay <coughs> post program costs, we don't prepay for our programs, do we? So the checks we're writing are for programs that already happened. So the Is way that how we works. contract with whoever, you know, whatever entertainers or vendors are, as I'm looking down these checks, they're for 
something that's already occurred, correct? So the way that it works is that the uh, person who's coordinating the program puts in a, chest re uh, a check request prior to the uh, performance. I will return. Uh, prior to the performance, and then we hold the check until subsequent to that performance. So the checks that you're seeing um, are checks that were written probably during um, during March, prim uh, I'm sorry, during February primarily, uh, for performances that were going to occur in, in March or later. Uh, we still have those checks and we're holding those checks. We don't deliver the checks until uh, until the conclusion of the program. I see, okay. Because I oh, was one of Carolyn, then, then we'll cancel, obviously cancel that check if the program doesn't occur. Okay, well, the, the, I was trying to figure out, do we have to now go back to all these vendors and see if we can somehow rearrange something else or get a refund? I wasn't sure how we did that, but that makes sense. I, I totally understand that. Um, are, we, uh, are we implementing any parameters, like because we don't know what the future holds, what type of entertainment we might even be? considering as far as programs? I know we've done a lot. I'm just saying in terms of people coming into the library, is that something we may put on hold for a while since we're not even sure if that's a possibility? Are, is this, are we on the agenda? Yeah, well, I, t I tell you, I think Carolyn, I think Susan was going to address that during her- Okay, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Well, thank you for the clarification. I appreciate yeah, it. Let's, let's let Susan go ahead with her. Thing. But Susan, if you could remember to adjust that because that's a, a good question. Well, not because it's a good question, because yeah. it's a question. Yeah, so the uh, library closed. We had a kind of process uh, when we had our pandemic response uh, plan, and the board had been planning to look at that last month. And by the time the board meeting was, the library was already all closed up. <laughs> and uh, so we never even had a chance to do it. And it went very, very fast. The plan we were on, you know, it's a three phase plan. We were on phase one for a few days and then phase two uh, came very quickly and phase three immediately on the heels. So we had like one day of curbside delivery service at the library and then, uh, and then the governor issued his stay at home order and so we were not able any longer to even do that. So, um, so uh, Tim had asked me to talk a little bit about um, what kind of plan we were starting to make in terms of reopening the library. And so what we're doing right now is we're offering a lot of virtual services. We have, um, we have well, for example, I think Patty attended one of the virtual groups this week. She went to Knitwits. And so we have some programs like that where people are doing sort of Zoom versions of things. We've had some story hours. We've had uh, ballet and books. We've had classes, a number of different things. So the staff really very quickly transitioned from in-person things to having a whole schedule of things that we couldn't do any of them to trying to turn those things into things that we could still be offering to the public. So I am super proud of how well the staff has done with that. Um, I love the fact that they took the front page of our website and turned that into a list of all kinds of activities every day for people to check and things to do, some of them live, some of them links. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work like that. They um, also have started to work with some of the performers like Claire Carolyn was talking about to see if some of those can be performed remotely. Um, and, and they're negotiating on that, you know, they're, you know, we don't want to pay if somebody was going to be do so, doing something in purpose in person and traveling a long way. That's not the same thing as doing a program online. So, you know, they're negotiating a little bit, which I got to say is taking the librarians out of their comfort zone a little bit. That's not <laughs> Not their normal thing to do, <laughs> but they've been great. They've been awesome. So uh, they've been doing that. I'm getting some new contracts to uh, to sign remotely. So that's been good. Um, so that all of this is taking place remotely. Then we've got all of our e-resources, which we've been working on building up. We've done some um, tutorials on how to use some of the databases and getting a lot of attention that way. Um, so there's a lot of life going on. I've really, really been very impressed by what they've been able to pull together and they have some plans going forward because we just don't know when this is going to be over. Yes. Uh, Governor Pritzker just today was still, um, you know, being that very hurts. tentative about when the ending yeah. point of this was going to be. I was at the Niles Township meeting uh, of the school superintendents and park district superintendents and the village managers and things yesterday and 
Uh, and the schools are all starting to get very concerned about the fact that they don't know what the future is. But they, um, we, all of us are in the same boat, which is that we all have to just wait. But we are working on a plan. The plan um, is it's going to be so we, we kind of closed down in phases and we will ramp back up in phases. But unfortunately, the ramping back up part will take a lot longer um, because until uh, it's safe for people to work here, we're going to have to do things really slowly. So the, um, to be able to reopen, the governor has to lift the stay at home order. And uh, to fulfill the OSHA requirements, we will have to have enough supplies of personal protective equipment for staff. We, oh, and also, not just that, but you know, wipes. We'll need to be able to clean and disinfect the building continuously. So we'll need to have enough of that kind of thing. Dave is looking for it every day. And you know, sometimes he, he is a little lucky. And he did stock up before we closed, but we ran through a bit of it during that last couple of weeks. So, um, so that's the, we'd have to have a good supply of gloves, masks, cleaning supplies, things like that. We, so we cannot open until we have that. Um, so then what we're thinking is that probably the first thing that will happen is that uh, maintenance and IT will have to come back first once the order is lifted. Rich has had to shut down or has shut down almost all the equipment in the building to save money and power and everything. But that means that they're all shut down. So when they come back up, they'll have updates that need to be loaded, things like that. So they are going to need at least a couple of days to get the building and all of its technology back in order. So that'll be the first people that come back in the building will be maintenance and IT. Uh, the second phase of it, I think, will be bringing back some of the people from patron services uh, to start checking in all of the materials that we took in at the very end. Um, and get those reshelved and then to start accepting materials back through the book return. And then the people in technical services that are the ones that order the books and, and DVDs and process them, uh, they will be coming back in to start getting, in, we, we've been holding our orders for a while here. So there will be a great deal to process during that time. And then I hope that we will be able to start up the curbside service again. Uh, get, letting people place holds on things, pulling things. At the moment, there's no materials delivery from other libraries. So you can't get things from other libraries. It'll be, it, we won't be able to fully offer that until we have uh, delivery again. Um, and, uh, and then the next phase would be probably letting people back in the stacks, but having probably pulled some of the furniture out so that people can't like sit close together. But the thing that I'm really hearing from patrons is what they really, really want and miss are the people that don't have computers at home. I talked to a lady just tonight who, um, she has not been on a computer in a month because she doesn't have any access. I was able to remind her that the library has Wi-Fi and I do see people in their cars outside of the library oh. hopping on our Wi-Fi, so, which yeah. they're welcome to do. We're happy to have them do that. It's why we left it on. So, and she had not, that had not ever occurred to her. So she was gonna try to get a computer from her sister and come on over. So, but that's what some people are really going to want is to get their hands back on the computers. So we'll try to figure out a safe way to do that. So it's just a kind of a, a gradual ramping up process. Uh, I think some of the staff will be continuing to work from home doing the virtual kinds of programming from home. Uh, some of the staff will still have health issues and not be able to come back right away. And then of course we have, you know, the two week uh, FMLA edition where people can get paid, you know, at two weeks of sick time that are parents who have kids that they have to take care of. And then of course people can also just take FMLA. So I think, I think we'll be running on a skeleton crew for a while. Uh, I don't anticipate us getting completely back to normal. Uh, uh, probably not till fall. We're already pretty much assuming that we'll be doing a virtual summer reading program. Um, we have canceled all of the pro all the in-person programs through May, but I will frankly be surprised if we're able to do anything for a while. So that's kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. Karen? I was just wondering in terms of material due dates, are you just extending those indefinitely or how's that going to work for patrons? Yes, yeah, the due dates have keep being extended every time uh, the libraries extend their closure and the, and the governor extends things, they all get extended. I think they're all out to June 1 at the moment. Okay. And of course, you know, we went since we went fine free April 1st, um, that's not going to, we just keep trying to make sure people understand that we're not going to be charging them fines. We wiped the fines, uh, we extended the dates, so nobody should be worrying about that. I know people actually would like to return their materials. We have yeah. 
Yes, <laughs> thousands of material. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but we don't want to be touching their materials right now, yeah, quite frankly. I, I don't want those coming in. And that's another thing that we have to get completely, our, our procedures completely sorted out is exactly how are we going to handle those materials when they come back through. Yeah. You know what, Susan? Uh, we have a Chromebook that was damaged by my grandson. And in order to get it repaired, they keep it there at their site for 14 days before they even touch it. Oh, wow. And then after the 14 days, wow. they'll look at it. Wow. So she had to actually buy a second computer <laughs> so that he could do his work for school. Oh, man. Uh, Susan, is there any thought to, um, I, I see that um, the grocery stores now uh, have installed shields, uh, plastic shields, uh, any kind of thought on that kind of thing? Yeah, Dave has already brought that up. Um, I actually had a good email conversation with um, Fire Chief Feld yesterday, and he was actually suggesting, I, I was saying that our staff are starting to print up 3D, um, 3D printing the masks. Nice. And um, I the shields. Idea. Yeah, but and he actually said that he thought that we should save those for ourselves because uh -huh. our staff was going to need them. And, but then we had yeah. more than we needed that then we could pass them to the police and they would like to use them too. So yeah, but, but yeah, we're thinking in terms of all the different ways that we could be protecting people. Sure. And, and we may very well end up with some uh, plastic or, or vinyl or whatever kind of shields. At the post office, I noticed today, it's just like kind of a big plastic sheet. Yeah, but the pharmacy has that too. Yeah, that's right, yeah. the jewel pharmacy. Um, yeah, they started with the plastic sneeze guard, as they call it, and then they put the plastic sheeting yeah. in front of yeah. So um, when the um, um, deliveries from the other libraries, is that going to be a total consortium one time it'll just start or is that? Yes. Uh, okay. It's not like individual libraries. No, start. that's Rails. Uh, Rails has held, has just stopped delivering anything. They did that almost right of it way. So I think that will probably be determined as libraries start to come back online. And then, you know, there'll probably be a range of pe when people start coming back. So sure. I don't know how fast they'll do it, but. Yeah, that, that is not in our control. Susan, do you intend to have some staff who are able to do their duties remotely continue to do so in order to keep the social distancing of not? Yes. Yeah, no, like, yes. So when I say I'll bring back patron services, it certainly cannot be all of patron services coming back all at the same time. So yes, it definitely will have to be staggered so that we have a, a minimum number of staff in the building and then some of the staff still continuing to work from home. And that's obviously going to be a lot easier for the parents and uh, some of those people. So yeah, it'll it'll be based on the business need, you know, whatever the library actually needs, but also trying to balance out the needs of the personnel. Do you think that um, so you've had some some um, good experiences with holding some of the programs virtually during this time? Do you think that you would move forward with with um, virtual program uh, brings after. yeah I, I can see where that might might happen that some of these might be successful it's, it's kind of like we've got our virtual library and then we'll bring back the physical library but I can see where the virtual library certainly all of those e-resources that people have now discovered those yes. are, continue yes. to be there a lot of people like checked out their first ebook this last no, 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 I meant I meant the actual but, programs yeah that, but the programs yeah I think some of them yes, um, may suit themselves like that nitwits program I would oh, never yeah. have thought that would be a good online program frankly it's people sure. winning but they like it so yeah I can see where that's going to just be another avenue for getting programming out and um we're also finding that some of the things you can get a much larger audience in a way because you yep. show it, you might show it once, but then people might could be continuing to click on it multi, you know, for right. weeks to come. Like Lauren's uh, presentation she did on the databases. She did it at once and there yes. were, I don't know, maybe yes. 50 people watching it then, but now it's more like 400 people have watched sure. it. Sure. So yeah, <laughs> I can really see where that may be a good opportunity for us. Just like the nitwits. Um, I wasn't, didn't realize they were meeting every Monday and the one day I realized, oh my God, they already met, but I was able to go on later and pull up what they had worked on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and personally, I think it's cool because we, with this, we're meeting every week, where we, before we were meeting once a month. Yeah. 
it's working out great. In fact, I was so impressed by it and by Bernadetta's way of handling it and managing, uh, even showing demonstrations from websites that uh, I'm thinking of checking out other web things that are going on at the library. Great. Uh, anybody else have any other questions for Susan? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of I, I do about this particular topic, if I could. Um, Susan, I, I, I noticed you mentioned it's like, it's sort of like a three phase plan for now. Five, and five, I think. Yeah. Okay. But what I was wondering is, um, could this board as a whole have a special meeting so we could get involved with what actually needs to take place for the library? I mean, there's so many different components between spacing and, and, and health issues and whatever. Um, and we haven't really put a plan together. You, you, you seem to have an idea of your um, COVID-19 plan, but I would like to suggest that it be a documented plan and we meet as a board because there are numerous ways to handle these different aspects of this process. And I think we should meet and start discussing that and have some plans for going forward, especially for now. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that, but I think we need to start at some point. So I was wondering if you had, um, you know, like a, some sort of guideline when you thought we could start meeting and, and moving forward, because I know some governmental entities are doing things incrementally in steps. Some are putting much more together at once but I'd like to know what as a board will we be doing and meet with the administration to move this along? Uh, can I speak? Um, Go ahead, Karen. I've been waving my hand, Tim. You gotta look up. <laughs> so, Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, you're, you're I really think this is part of what, what Susan needs to do. This is, so, this is sort of an operation. This is something that we need to delegate to her. This needs to go pretty quickly. I mean, she really didn't have time to consult with us. She had to take the library down quickly. I mean, I mean she consulted with us to the extent she could, but ramping it back up again is, is something that our director is gonna to have to do. And, and I don't wanna slow her down. I don't wanna slow down the administration in bringing the library back fully to business at an appropriate rate. And, and I, I don't wanna try and micromanage this at all. I think this is something that Susan should handle and should take care of bringing the library back to full working again. You know, to the extent she wants to consult with the board, we certainly uh, will be happy to do that. But I, I don't want her to have to draw up a plan and present it to us. I, I think she needs to work on devoting her time to actually getting us back to business and not, uh, not creating meetings for the board. Sue, Sue had her hand up next, Carolyn. Yeah, I mean, as somebody who's also very deep into this process of how to reopen up a library, <clears throat> I, ha I have to tell you that the entire library profession and community is 100% engaged in this process. The sharing of their resources, their plans, the best practices, the best data, the best research coming from RAILS, ALA, ILA, um, scientists, CDC, OCHA, all of these people are providing the best information and librarians as the information gatherers that they are, are excellent at compiling the best practices. And I think it's not really a place for a board to get involved because we're not day to day in the operations process. And uh, uh, like Karen said, to bog the, this complicated, stressful, anxiety ridden process down anymore. I mean, we have staff that are, uh, f you know, very concerned about their safety, concerned about their livelihoods, concerned, you know, I mean, it's just to, to add another layer to that just doesn't seem to be necessary in my opinion. I would add though that if the library could use some additional volunteers, and that is not people telling you what to do, but doing what your staff tells us to do, in terms of helping out the library get back into business. Uh, I'd be interested in doing that, particularly if I myself am not quite back to work yet, I would have some extra time. So uh, your too. volunteer, your coordinator can make a note of that. Me too. So uh, may I, may I answer, Tim? 
because yeah, it should kind of withdraw from like me. I, I like to do our normal go around okay. rather than the back and forth just okay. between the two people. So, uh, um, Diane, do you have anything on this? Would you like a special board meeting to review Susan's? Uh, uh, I don't see a need for any special board meeting. I think from what I've read in the director's report, how it's pages and pages and pages of how they've been adjusting and um, getting ready for COVID. This COVID-19, and what Susan just went through as far as what they're thinking of, I, I agree with what Sue uh, said as far as the library community is the best source of information, and there's no reason for us to be, be um, poking our nose in. Of course, we need to know about it, and as Karen said, volunteer if, if needed. Patty, I, like I say, I'm willing to, to help in any way necessary. As far as voting on it, I do feel the people in the library are, are getting all the information that we as board members are not getting. So therefore, they're more knowledgeable on this situation. Linda, anything? I uh, can't hear you, Linda. I think you're muted. No special okay. board meeting needed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as far you know, I I I like the idea of having the plan, um, a bullet point uh, um, um, uh, summation of the different items that you're you're planning on doing. That would be good for the board to know. Mm -hmm. um, I I I really can't see as I would have anything to contribute to your plans. I mean, I, what do I know about you know library? I know about being on the board, I don't know the actual running the library, right? So um, I don't see a need for meeting for it, but during our meetings, clearly uh, an update on, on how it's going and what the what the situation is uh, moving forward. That's my two cents on that. Can I speak Caroline? now? Sure. Um, what I'm requesting is a documented COVID-19 plan, which should outline not just um, superficial um, tasks, but there's a litany of things that take place. There are um, processes we need to figure out what exactly is going to be happening throughout all the departments. Each library department is going to have to make adjustments. They'll be restructuring, but we should be given some sort of plan based on each department overall, overall um, um, health um, issues. I mean, I've been reading up on CDC. I've been part of webinars. I've been on ALA and ILA and even international sites. I've participated in um, other meetings. I've seen libraries all across the area. You know, we should be involving our board in the planning process of what should be taking place. No one wants to stifle Susan, but as a as a board, we should expect documented information to see her plan and her breakdown so we have an, an understanding of what is taking place. And I would think as trustees, we should have a great deal to offer. I don't understand how we would not be knowledgeable in any of this. But um, I think for us to keep having verbal conversations, um, regarding a, a pandemic and a, a huge process that needs to take place is definitely not um, being responsible. Great, thank you. Uh, it sounded like the consensus of the board though, that rest of the board is that we didn't need a special committee meeting on it. Uh, Susan, I think if you uh, continue to uh, update us on, on generally what the plan is, uh, I think that's this is on what the uh, it's it's going to be developed over time. I mean, this was sure. just, you know, the preliminary broad strokes of what we have in mind. It's, it's very fluid. Uh, sure. It's going to keep changing. So, but yes, I certainly plan on putting together a written plan. The, board, the staff is going to need that too. We, we, there's a lot to decide, but a lot of it is very day-to-day -day minutia kinds of things that I do think are not 
governance related. I, I do think that they are just simply the, the running of the library, the day-to-day -day running of the library. So I will certainly very much try to keep the board informed. If there are things where I want your advice and, and I, to get your thoughts on things, I certainly will reach out. It's, I don't want to exclude the board by any means, but I do appreciate that the board is uh, giving me the freedom to work on this. Thank you. Great. That was all I had for the director's report tonight. Very good. All right, next item on our business. I have some questions for the director's report. Go ahead, Carolyn. Thank you. Um, for starters, I'd like to thank all of our staff for their innovation, creativity, and continuous hard work to provide endless opportunities online and through social media. Increasing e-resources, I noticed, repurposing our events calendar, and much more for all our patrons. I thought it was just amazing. Um, and um, Susan, I, I noticed that you're participating in all sorts of meetings and webinars, and I realize you're getting a great deal of information to help you plan with this COVID-19 situation. Um, again, I would like documented information. I feel like we should have a plan. Um, but I did have a couple of questions. I believe page 30, is that still your report? Yes. Um, let's see. The admin has held a series of budget meetings with supervisors. Oh, is this for the upcoming 2020, 2021 budget? Or is it just what's happening now? Uh, well, this was our usual set of budget meetings that we always have every year. But um, as I say, you know, clearly things have changed since the department had started putting together their budgets. So we are going to have to really very much reassess what we are planning for the future. I, like, you know, if we're not going to be doing uh, programs inside the library, that's going to change things up quite a bit. So yes, it's, it was in its so it's next, phases. It's next year's budget. Yeah, okay. next year's budget is long done. Planning process. Okay. And yeah. then that's what I was going to ask if, um, if you'll be providing some parameters. I'm sure you're aware that, you know, it looks like we're going to be well, thank God for our technology because we can handle all these online and um, other e-resources for our patrons. Okay, that's what I needed to check. Um, and then uh, another thing is, oh, great ideas by staff and repurposing our events calendar. I thought that was awesome. And let's see, collections. Yes, congratulations to staff. Our e-sources have been a vital outlet to library patrons during the stay-at-home period. Not only has usage substantially increased, but we are also attracting new users as well, which I think is great. Um, what, I, what came to mind was, I'm guessing this is going to increase our um, like e-resources in comparison to our book purchasing. Would we need to do some budget adjusting to make sure that you can cover all of that? I, I'm assuming books are down, even though e-resources are, you know, increasing, you know, Hoopla and everything else that, that people love. Yeah, no, that's a good question. And we have thought about that quite a bit. Um, Just a thought. So. Yeah, well, but the other thing that I have going on that I have not gotten any guidance from the state on is that we have our per capita grant money that we theoretically are supposed to have spent by the end of June. And so what I've been telling digital oh. services is to, since I'm not gonna be able to spend it on some of the other things we had in mind. So, so I've been saying, you know, fill those holds. We've got all these people, you know, they always fill the holds for the brand new items um, on overdrive <laughs> and things like that. You know, you always wanna have your hot things, but people have been putting in requests for a lot of really old stuff too. Okay. And so okay. I told her, go ahead and buy some of that. We'll, we'll make that a deeper, richer collection. And so we're using per capita funds for it at this point. Okay, all right, just yeah, thought, no, that's all a right. good point. Those were, that's all I had, thank you. Thank you. Okay, very nice. Yes, th thank you to all the staff. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, really. I will pass that along. It's been hard for everyone, so thank you. All right, under new business, we have uh, a motion uh, moved that the Board of Trustees approve the recommended changes to Administrative Policy 3.05 Lending Regulations. Do I have a motion? A motion. Anybody? Karen, okay. motion. Patty, I'll second. Second. Right. All right. This way Susan we can talk. Rope. Yeah, this is the, yeah. essentially the uh, uh, limiting of the uh, removal of the uh, 
fines, right? Correct. Well, and um, I give this back to the board about every year to update because we are always little tweaks along the way. So yeah, this was actually from last month. Um, and so yeah, it just, it, it makes the changes on the chart on page 42 uh, to get rid of any referrals to fines except for the hotspots and the Roku's. Um, and it did add a couple of new items that like the quick pick magazines just so that everything is taken care of here. Sure. So you can see from the list at the bottom that this is something that gets updated quite frequently. Yes. All right. Uh, anybody have any comments on this one? Questions? Um, I have, yeah, I have a question too. All right, Diane, go ahead. Um, I'm just not familiar with a column that says vacation loan. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I suppose you wouldn't be. Um, yeah, it, we have always, if somebody was going on vacation, if like say, uh, somebody says, I'm, we're going to India for the summer. Um, it was always up to the discretion of the supervisor of the department uh, would find out from patron services if they could have an extended loan for it. Um, it's kind of a thing of the past now that we have automatic renewals, yeah. I have to say. It doesn't really come up very often, so I can see why you asked about it. But that's what it's for, theoretically. If somebody was going to be away for a long time, you would never give anybody something that is in high demand for that. But um, but yeah, it would be. If, but you're still going to keep that terminology in the report? Um, I mean, is there a need for it? You know, I, I want to discuss it with the patron services staff just to find out how often it is used. Because honestly, I, I would be making it up. I don't know. Yeah, I, it seems to me it's it's really not necessary anymore. So Definitely that might not. be something we could consider just for the future. Yeah, it, just taking it out. Yep. All the other those are no, except for one of them. Well, the top one is most materials. So yeah. that's yes, it's actually yes to almost everything, but almost nothing, but the exceptions are all, can't be used on that way. Sure. But yeah, I can check with them. Um, it does that, do you want to see this back again or do you want to just, we'll keep it in mind for the next revision? I don't know. Uh, I would just as soon take that out right now. Um, well, unless you, you really feel like you need to check with your staff. Uh, yeah, I, I really, I don't know if I okay. would be, yeah. All right. I don't need to see it again if you decide to eliminate it. Okay. The next revision you're talking, putting it in for next year? Yeah, whenever I bring it to you the next time. Okay. It doesn't phase me one way or another. If, yeah. if it's pulled and we talk about it next time or if we do it this, you know, you'd rather get the uh, opinion of your staff that makes sense. Yeah, they're the experts. Thank you. Carolyn? Um, yes, I had a couple of questions. Um, I can't seem to find a grid that lists um, the items and how, what the um, yeah, lending yeah. period is. My question it's was 42. the first. Carolyn, it's on page 42. I know, I, I don't know, it's not in order. But I had a question about the first line item. It said, say miscellaneous or other, or it had a general term. Yeah, most materials. Oh, that's it. And I and and then there's a list of maybe nine other lines of yeah, items. Exceptions. What's left after that? What does other materials? What did, what would that represent? I was thinking, can that be, you know, just detailed so it's obvious what it is? Well, my regular books. Yeah, it's everything. It's it's everything in the building except for the things below. Everything. It. So what else would we be yeah. lending out if not those tech items and books? Like that what is books in the first it, one. It, yeah, it's the it's the books and the DVD. Traditional library materials, books. Right. So so uh, oh so other materials means books. Well, and DVDs that are not brand new ones. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, it mostly does mean books. Yeah. Because there's a line item, doesn't it say DVDs? You get to take out 10, I think. I'm just guessing since I don't have that sheet in front of me. Yeah, that's the new ones. The DVDs and Blu-rays new, it says that's got a limit on it. Okay, so then that first that first line is older, our books, and then old like DVDs yeah. that are older, which I guess aren't in demand. I think it's, okay. It would probably be the CDs too, Carolyn. 
Yeah, yeah. It's it's basically yeah. everything except for your you know video games and your new astrology. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then I did have a couple of points. Um, you know, I'm I'm. I know you mentioned that there didn't seem to be any problems with, uh, or, the, or the board in the past had approved unlimited um, lending. And I have to say, even now between the library being closed and, and fines that people stopped coming, in, coming to the library, I'm curious to know actually what are our actual numbers of library items that are checked out at this time? I mean, yeah. it, it it has to be massive, um, yeah. but um, and and I think that's key. And we don't have that information tonight. But also, I don't agree that um, keeping unlimited checkouts is beneficial. Um, I um, I mean, some people are reader are are avid readers, but the majority of people are not. And I think. Um, well, what I wrote here is unlimited checkout of books with four automatic renewals, which is our process. Um, uh, let's see, um, drastically decreases availability for residents. Unlimited checkout of books also increases purchasing to handle the demand. This results in numerous duplicate copies of books, which ended up in huge bins to be discarded or donated, which I did notice last year. So what I'm saying is unlimited is just endless. Couldn't we come up with a logical number for the purpose of getting those materials back to the library? One of the major complaints I hear is how books are never available. And unlimited checkout of books would definitely be a reason for that. Um, the 50 books to Chicago card holders, I think is a bit excessive. Um, I, I, I understand. The Carolyn, I'm, I, I need to stop you though, Carolyn. Nothing here says unlimited. It, but well, but that's because there isn't a limit on most of them. It, and the, it's oh, under oh, restriction. Four renewals? Each, it's, each well, column has the Talking about books, limit. they're unlimited. It says four, it says four renewals. It's, it's the restrictions column though. For example, in hot picks, which are the high demand items that Carolyn is talking about. So those are not in the most materials. You do have a limit on those, limit six per card, and you can only check them out on a Niles Main District card. So the restrictions is, I think, where you would find those. On the first thing, we don't limit the number of things people check out, but people check out what they think they want to use. So, Carolyn, are you talking about renewals or number no, of No, I'm items? saying that somebody can walk in, a 10-year-old could walk into the library and just take out unlimited number of books. So can adults. Oh, numbers. Yes, that's what I meant. And I'm thinking unlimited numbers, we should be able to come up with a logical number. Other libraries don't, all libraries don't allow unlimited um, borrowing. And what I'm trying to say is since the biggest complaint is that we don't have the books and you're on, you wait forever on our wait list, maybe decreasing unlimited numbers would definitely change that. And it would have more materials in the library and available to have it taken out more than once more by more people than just one person. I'm, and I also think 50 books to Chicago cardholders is excessive. I mean, um, you, you mentioned the reciprocal agreement, but the reciprocal agreement does not mandate that uh, we need to, um, it doesn't mandate lending quantities. I mean, the, the, the reciprocal agreement means that they are letting us borrow 50. That, I know, that's and the I'm reciprocal saying, part. And that's fine, but I'm saying if, a, if, a, if, I'm, if I, I've heard for years, the complaint is how we don't have items in our library. I'm saying reconsider unlimited numbers, come up with, with a quantity. I also think, you know, we should be able to create some sort of guide by adult children, teens for checkouts with, you know, with a particular number. And then maybe in the summer when reading is a lot, it's more easily for them to read during the summer than during the rest of the year, increase the numbers, but have some sort of parameters instead of everything's just out of the library. And I know that we end up buying more copies because people are looking for the merchandise and that would help solve that too. 
Because when they all come back, we have five copies, and sometimes you don't want five copies on your shelf. Okay, let's let's go around on that because uh, I'll and I'll speak first. That actually, Carolyn, I think that's uh, not an unreasonable request. I think that we can probably come up with uh, have Susan take a look at uh, limiting the total number per uh, category. That's all I have to say about that. Tim, uh, can I just jump in though? Because I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding here. The fundamental misunderstanding is that we're preventing people from checking out the books they want because we're letting people check out so many things, but you can't check out, you can't hold on to things that somebody has placed a hold on. As soon as somebody places a hold on the thing that you've taken home, you have to bring it back. So well, it's the well, high yeah. demand well, items, which are the exceptions, like the hot picks and the new things. And, and you're always going to have to buy 20 copies of the new James Patterson to meet the demand because everybody wants to read it right then. And you would have to buy 50 <laughs> copies of it to completely keep up with that demand. It's, all, it's called demand management. That's where those extra copies are coming from. And that, and that has nothing to do with the numbers of things people can check out. It has to do with the fact that everybody wants to read the same thing at the same time. But somebody being able to go and check out 50 books on Civil War history because that's what they love and that's what they're interested in isn't stopping anybody else from checking anything out because frankly not everybody wants to read Civil War history but if they did they'd put it on hold and the person would have to bring it back so that's um, all I wanted to say about that sure. I hear you it but it just seems like if we don't have fines any longer um, if they don't bring it back because somebody else has a hold on it we only um, okay uh the only power we have is now uh, letting them not letting them check anything else out correct well but you're solving a problem we don't know if we have yet i i, I would say if it becomes a problem then yeah we should look at it but right now it's not a problem that's not going to fix the problem carolyn is talking about which i agree is a problem but uh -huh. that's not going to fix it well if that's not going to fix it then it doesn't help Susan, isn't this um, a problem? I'm not a problem. Isn't this um, a regulation that we had in place before? On yeah. Limited yeah, it's, yes. not, okay. it's not new. So then this whole discussion should be on another agenda item, shouldn't it? Because why are we talking about something that we've already motioned as a regulation? I mean, we. I don't know why we're talking about it now. I think if we want to talk about changing it, then there has to be a motion to change it and put it on the agenda next time. Well, I, I to play devil's advocate on this one, we are talking about it now because we are talking about our lending regulations. Right. So this is an appropriate time to talk about all the regulations associated with lending. What we what we made a motion on before, what we passed before, was getting rid of the um, the fines. So now we're looking at our our we're having a review of the lending regulations. And Carolyn brought up maybe we should restrict the unlimited numbers. Um, Can I ask a Susan, question? Yeah, uh, uh, it, okay, one, Susan, add, add, one minute. One minute. Okay. I'm still talking. Yep. But if Susan says that changing the number of uh, uh, changing the unlimited numbers isn't going to solve the problem that Carolyn is uh, addressing, then then it's a moot point to my mind. But go ahead, Karen, if you want to say something. I just want to ask a question. Uh, do we even have any statistics as to, are there any people who are actually taking out 50 books? I mean, or is that some information that's really of a private nature and we really wouldn't be able to figure out who, if anyone, I mean, I certainly don't want the names of anyone, but right. Is anyone really taking out that many books to begin what with anyway? Percentage? Yeah, we have looked at that. It's, um, it's it, you have a really small number of kind of super users. And it used to be much more with like DVDs. People used to walk out with like this many DVDs. You don't see very much of that anymore. It used to actually be more of a problem. But um, yeah, we have looked at it. It's not like a lot of people check out a ton. But you know, if you're a mom and you're here with your three little kids, by the time they all have picked stuff, it can be a lot of things. And okay. you don't necessarily want to have separate cards for each kid. So it can be a lot of different kinds of situations. 
it's dangerous because being a person who's brought kids and then the books wind up missing, uh, <laughs> that's why I always exactly. lift them. Yep. Oh, who else has anything to say on this? Sue? Oh, it, it, you know, I trust Susan and the rest of the library staff. They know what they're doing as far as the volumes. They're the ones on the front lines. If people are coming in and complaining, you know, it, I really think that they may be better going to the director and the staff than a trustee because the trustees don't know the day to day operations and the types of the books. So that's all. Linda? I agree. Um, because then if there's a certain title, then we just buy another one. You just request it. So that's usually how you go about concerns like that. So um, I don't have an issue with this. Uh, Patty? My question is, if we have so few people that are being these mega users and you don't feel that's necessarily causing the problem we're hearing about, could we figure out what is causing a problem that we're hearing about or what would solve the problem? Yeah, we're, we are working on that. It's uh, the new head of adult services, Mary Kay, has been uh, really studying up on this and trying to figure out um, the best way to manage this stuff. So I actually have confidence that it is, is getting better and it will get much better. But yeah, it does, it really requires people paying a lot of attention to it. And I think that they just weren't paying as much attention as they needed to, right, maybe. Yeah, but you know, the fundamental problem is everybody always likes to read the same things at the same time. Everybody's got their book group and they're all reading things, you know, all together. And so it's really hard to keep up for a while. And then, of course, you have all these books left over afterwards. So, yeah, we've actually started renting some of the books instead of buying all of them. So that helps with that a little bit. Really? You can Carolyn. rent the books? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Carolyn? It, just to recap, um, yes, patrons are complaining that, you know, they can't get the books they want, but just in terms of quantity, to have so many items or, or uh, a youngster walking out with, you know, CDs or DVDs up to the sky, I mean, there has to be some logic to how much of what they're borrowing they're actually going to utilize. And unfortunately, it's true. A lot of these items get lost. They forget they even have them. And then we keep auto renewing four times. Just this process definitely leaves the library with less materials in it. I'm saying that shouldn't be our purpose to have our library materials sitting out in homes and then we repeat, we, we automatically renew them four times. I, I don't see how that's benefiting the residents. And, and you know, it's true. You come into the library, you're interested in a certain book, it's not there. Maybe something else will pique your interest. But that's why we need more materials in the library as opposed to everywhere else. That's what I'm trying to, to um, that's a point I'm really trying to bring. So can I, Tim? Go ahead. Uh, so I actually do think that's uh, what we should be doing. I do think materials should be in people's homes. That's where people should be reading them. They should be getting dusty within our library. So I actually think it is right that we're not hoarding books within the library. So I don't mind the fact that people are taking out a lot of books. And I don't think that it's a problem that they're taking out the real popular recent ones. I think that problem is cured by the fact they have to return it as soon as someone else puts a hold on it. Uh, they have to bring it back. They can't keep it indefinitely. So I think that uh, it's not really a big problem. Tim? Yes, Diane? Yes, I also don't think it's a problem. I, I know when I was teaching, I would come in and take out 50 books. Um, granted, they were the early childhood, but nevertheless, I was glad that I could do that. And I think this, I don't, there's no solution to, I don't think, what the real problem is. But I think the fact that we have hot picks and that we have uh, limits on ebooks and DVDs and all that, I think that's enough 
and I just um, agree with what is presented here. All right, I think we're pretty much at a consensus that it seems like the board uh, is not leaning towards um, putting a, a, a limit on those items other than what's already listed here. So I think we can take the roll on this one. Hey, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, no. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Yes. All right, Susan, maybe in the future, if you keep us updated on any progress you have, uh, staff has made towards uh, addressing some of the sure. items. Uh, well, and, and can I just encourage the trustees, if your friend is telling you that they can't ever get what they want at the library, they should be complaining to me and telling me what it is that they can't get a hold of so that I can follow up with my staff. Yep. Well, they are complaining at the library. I, I hear it all the time. I know. So, I, I don't know what the chain of command is. I'm, all, I'm at the library all the time, Carolyn. I've never heard anyone complain about it. Well, you know, that. that's great for you, but I'm just saying, I hear it from people who are on book clubs and all these other issues. I'm just bringing it to your attention. Um, yeah, great, and, you know, let's move along. Happening. Thank you, wonderful. All right, next item is... Uh, <coughs> oh, I had a question. So what did we vote on? That we Susan's voted on going... the, uh, um, well, the resolution she's preparing, was... She's preparing this document for us? No, but, no, no, Carolyn, we voted on, voted uh, on yes. this, the chart. Yeah, I know. Susan is in the process of creating this plan or this this um, guideline. So are we going to see it when it's done? What, what, what? I don't know Carol, what guideline Carol, you're talking Carol, about. I, let me suck. Okay. We're talking about. I'm, I'm talking. We had voted on the changes to the uh, lending regulations as shown on page 42. That's what we voted on. Then we had asked Susan to get surprised of any, any uh, changes or any updates that the staff may uh, uh, bring forward uh, regarding uh, resolution of issues uh, um, that you had brought up for people uh, not finding materials. That's what we voted on. So my question is, Susan will be compiling this new list Will she's we be getting a copy of it? No, no, no. I didn't. Have, she's where did making you all. Well, there was she's no word creating of list. a new document, isn't she's she? Not, I didn't ask her to create a document. I never said those words. I never said creating a document. Okay, we looked at a piece of paper. Them. Where did you get that? I never said that. You know, I don't want to argue with you. My point well, is. I never said those words, no Carolyn. How, do you, how, do you, how did you come up with that, that conclusion? I never said those words. I asked Man. her to keep us surprised of the issues that you brought up. That's all I said. I Can said, I answer I list, now? Okay. I didn't say document, I didn't say any of that. Can I answer now? Let's move on. We're gonna move on to the next issue. I have a question. Regarding and if what? You don't, and if you would stop yelling at me, I could maybe get it out. All right. Um, well, in my okay. interpretation is that Susan, it has provided us with the current list of uh, what we loan and what the numbers are. And she's going to, she told us last meeting, because we decided to eliminate fines, that she would have to rewrite this. So this I just want to wrote. This, this is, is the rewritten the document. document. This is the document before you. So, so this is what's going to be in our, in our, um, you said that um, it, it's part of our lending of, of the documents. regulations. The lending so regulations. So it's just this page, and in it somewhere you're going to add what our that we also got rid of our fines. So that's going to be it, part it, of it. That has happened. That's that. Okay. We already did that last time. It's part of our manual, and oh, we've okay. made changes to it uh, as a result of the vote tonight. So this document, as amended will be in our manual. That's what we voted on. And we'll uh, be getting a we copy of it. You got it in front of you. It's given to you in your board. She just package. said we we voted on on this document and there were some changes made to it. Yeah, on, yes. in your board packet, page forty-two. Do you There's know, things I, that so, are highlighted. Those are. I just changes. want a completed copy. Thank you. Diane will get everybody a cleaned up copy with all the final changes. Yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Okay. Thank you. God. Okay, we're moving along. Next item of business is. Uh, a motion uh, moved that the Library Board of Trustees approve the expenditures not to exceed $13,941.60 for 
for the renewal of 12 Adobe Creative Cloud desktop apps, one year subscription licenses from CW, I'm sorry, CDW G. Motion, Diane. Diane made the motion. Second, Linda. Linda seconded. Great. Uh, Greg, Greg or Susie, you want to Greg. update on this? Sure. Uh, so we have a uh, we have a number of uh, machines uh, down in the uh, digital services area that use uh, this product. Um, the expiration date is, I believe, the middle of May. Um, let's see. I think it's. Um, I don't have it, but it's a, it's about the middle of May or so. And um, this will take us from May to next May. Um, the key thing here is, yeah, we're going to, we need 12 licenses, but because of our status that everybody is out, we'll probably not buy them all at once. There's some key licenses that we have to buy in order uh, to keep the staff functioning down there. But because Patrons will not be in the library and will not be able to access the equipment on which these licenses reside. We may delay uh, actually making those purchases. So it'll save us a little bit of money by, by extending, uh, actually by shifting the year out a little bit for uh, this, some subgroup of these licenses. So the way that I've written the motion is um, that you're approving an amount not to exceed this 13,941.60. Um, in addition, we're also continuing to lobby uh, Adobe on, uh, on this renewal to see if we can get some overall relief um, because you know it should occur to you now that uh, we have these licenses that are expiring on equipment that patrons cannot access and um, uh, because of the, yeah. uh, the COVID uh, stay at home order that the governor has issued. So, you know, we're trying to look at it a couple of different ways to, you know, try to, you know, get the most value for every dollar spent as usual. Um, is there an issue? Uh, hold on. One, I, I, I'm sorry. I had a question. No, go, um, ahead. go ahead. Yeah, is there, um, is there a price difference if we don't purchase all 12, if we do it individually like that, is it going to end up costing no. more or is it? No, not to my knowledge, Tim. I, you know, I don't think 12 licenses, quite frankly, I don't think 12 yeah. licenses is enough I mean, volume for them to, uh, you know, say, yippee, here's 10% off. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. <laughs> I agree. Karen? Oh, so these are more, partly for patrons and partly for staff. Is that right, Greg? Yeah, but it's all, it's all to facilitate staff. I'm sorry. It's all to facilitate patron usage. So... Oh. You know, this, the staff does use it, and maybe they need it to prepare for a program or something. I don't know. Uh, Teaching a class, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the moment, you know, we don't have patrons actually using it. It's good to have it on the, on the staff machines. So when a patron says, okay, I tried to do X, Y, and Z, and now I can't do it, it's, I'm not getting the right result, then, you know, they can emulate the issue on, on their own machine using exactly the same software. Uh, to try to help them troubleshoot. Okay. All right. So it's not going to be on the computers that the patrons use, but it'll be on the staff ones. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, Karen, it says right here on uh, the second sentence, at the third sentence down, it says yeah, five patron max. max. But I thought that's great, just said something different. I thought. No, he said mostly for the patrons, but the staff may use it if they need it. That's what I heard him say. Well, it's on. It's on staff machines, Tim, like the machines at the desk, for example. Uh -huh. uh, we have two machines, we need two licenses, and that's, um, that's to provide a service point if a patron is having an issue with, you know, with, let's say, one of the MacBooks uh, with this, and with this uh, license on it. So they can help resolve their issues and provide a service level. So, like I said, we're trying to evaluate it in, in a way to make sure that, you know, we get the maximum value out of this. So, Greg? Yes. Um, you're talking about talking to the company to see if we can get, they'll let us delay 
putting it onto the patrons' computers. Uh, I would like to know how fast, if you decide, okay, we're opening next two weeks, are we going to be able to get it that fast, or are we going to be delayed? Yeah, we should uh, we should be just fine. Um, the way that you know the way that software used to work is you got a pile of disks and and you fed them. <laughs> See, that's the way I remember. My husband was the engineer. Now what happens is uh, you get a number and they call it a key, uh -huh. and you go to uh, an Adobe website and you put in your key and then it's downloaded. And that's oh, you know, okay, that's what, so it's a lot faster. Yeah, that's a pretty straightforward process. Cool. Okay. I have uh, unmuted Rich in case there's anything here that he needed to say. Is this the total number of Adobe uh, uh, licenses that we have for the library? Or is no, we have, uh, we have another set of licenses up in uh, marketing and PR. Ah. Um, and uh, this, is, this is exclusive of that. Sure, okay. Anybody else? Sue, Linda, Dan, Carolyn? I'm no. good, thanks. Great. Uh, Diane, would you take the role on this? Uh, Karen? Uh, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Sue? Yes. Okay. All right, next item of business is uh, a motion. Uh, we move that the Library Board of Trustees award uh, Coley, or Coley Elevator Company a contract in the amount of $14,213 to be paid from the Special Reserve Fund to install a new motor starter and pump motor valve on the library's elevator. I can make the motion. Somebody want to second it? Second. Oh, second. Okay. Was that Sue or Linda? Linda. Linda, good. All right, Greg, you wanna, we did have a side conversation about this. We just kind of a, almost a proprietary kind of a situation, right? Well, you know, it is, um, but the, we do have other um, elevator companies that will service it. Kone, uh, which is the high bidder here um, at 35,988, uh, is our uh, uh, service provider. They own the service contract. And when there's, you know, small things uh, to do, like preventive maintenance and things like that, Kone is on contract to come in and do that uh, to help keep it in good running order. Um, over 22 years, this was put in with the last edition in 1998, I believe. Um, over the last 22 years, uh, things have started to wear. Uh, in particular, the electronics, which um, are mechanical as opposed to solid state, um, are showing an incredible amount of wear and tear. Uh, additionally, um, we have this uh, uh, feature on the, on the elevator car, which causes it to self-level. So if, you know, if it starts to lose pressure, as this tank is losing, if it starts to lose pressure, then what happens is the uh, elevator motor and, and everything, the apparatus is re-engaged and causing the elevator to move up, let's say, to be even with the floor. So, you know, people don't trip getting in, people don't trip getting out. Um, so uh, the fact that this thing is self-leveling multiple times uh, an hour has even in, has increased further wear on the mechanics of the uh, electrical system. So it's, you know, it's wearing at, a, at an even faster clip. So, you know, what this is going to do is replace that with, uh, replace the electronics with a solid state um, a unit and then put a new uh, tank in place that is appropriately sealed and everything so that it doesn't have to self-level so many times. Um, Kali uh, is one of, I mean, it's, it's tough to get bids, uh, it, you know, I mean, you know, COVID not, uh, notwithstanding, it's tough to get bids on, on stuff because 
this particular elevator company has been sold a number of different times in a number of different consolidation actions in the industry. Um, but, you know, you see that we did get a bid from uh, Kali uh, of, of $13,933 plus $220 in permits and testing fees. Um, and then uh, Otis and Kone uh, uh, submitted uh, bids at a little bit higher. Does this have a, um, what, do they have a warranty on this or is it just, uh, is it, I don't know, do you know what kind of warranty we get on this from these guys? A, I think that's a one year warranty, Tim. Just, Oh yeah, it says one year, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a one year warranty and, uh, you know, it'll all be inspected, um, by the, and signed off on by the, uh, uh, by the village. Okay. All right. Well, the last thing I want is anybody to be stuck in the elevator. Exactly. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, anybody got anything on this guy, Karen? I have a, yeah, I have a question. Uh, Karen, raise your hand first. We'll get to you, Diane, after Karen. Okay. Are you on mute, Karen? I think you're on mute. Sorry, I was. Okay. Um, so I've certainly heard of Otis Elevator Company. I haven't heard of the other two. I presume they're reputable com companies too? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Kone, Kone, I just never heard of them. Yeah, Kone is actually the company that bought the company that made our elevator. Okay. Right. Yeah, so they're pretty uh, prominent. And uh, uh, Kali is, I believe, uh, more of a local company. Um, I don't okay. think they have as much of a national presence, but if you look at their letterhead, you know, um, they mentioned down at the bottom that a standard of excellence since 1908. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, they've been around. Diane. Oh, you're on mute, Diane. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm here. It's okay. So, um, why is there such a discrepancy in the price, 35000 compared to 14000 I don't know. You know, it's like one of those things where you try to press, um, you try to press on that and you get, you know, stuff like from the high bidder, that's what it costs, you know, and, and uh, for the low bidder, you make sure that, you know, everything that they're promising is exactly what you need and is comparable, you know, to the high bidder and so forth. So I, I don't have a good explanation for that. Okay. So how long will the elevator be out of service? Well, um, you know, it should be, uh, it should be a few days. And if we're able to act on this uh, quickly, we may be able to do it during the shutdown, you know, during the stay at home order. That would okay. be Because I, if if not, I was going to ask if they could do it when the uh, when we're closed. Yeah, I mean certainly, um, you know, one of the things that Dave tries to do is take advantage of something like Memorial Day weekend, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to do something like this when we have a couple of days that we're closed. Sure. Um, you know, the nature of this type of work, though, is that um, I don't know what exactly what um, union is at operation, mm -hmm. but these guys tend to be at union wages and um, as well as multipliers for working um, weekends or holidays. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure if we asked them uh, to do it over Memorial Day weekend that that would involve uh, an upcharge on the cost and the labor. You know how, how long it takes to do this? Is this a one day thing or a a no, I think, thing or? I think it's a couple of days, Tim. Okay. Yeah, it'd be great if it could be done before we reopen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn? Um, my question was, was this um, noticed from a service call or did you say it was a maintenance um, company that was out or was it an inspection? How did we come about to notice this? Um, well, you know, we, we had, a, we had the fire alarm, um, uh, I don't know how long ago at this point, a couple months ago, several weeks ago at this point. And, um, you know, we've been, um, what happened in the fire alarm, when the fire alarm trip, 
as near as we can determine is that there was a release of hydraulic fluid which which caused the sensor to to trip and then you know the bells went off and the fire department came and so on and so forth ah we continued to look at um look at this uh critically to see you know try to figure out why and uh we had uh, Kone come out. We also had the fire uh, alarm company come out and replace the sensor and so forth once it had tripped. Um, and um, as you know, as we were you know peeling the onion, so to speak, uh, during the investigation, we determined that this was in fact an issue. Okay, so it was Kone who um, identified this problem when they were out. Is that who was able to? Yeah, I believe I believe it was Kone. So do we have some sort of um, like work ticket or, um, you know, some, did they submit some kind of document to explain what they, what they found? I, I'm looking for actually the um, actual service ticket to understand what the issues were that they observed and, and how we're coming about with this uh, repair. Do we have something like that? Um, I don't know, I'd have to check. I think he, I think, Kove called it a detailed equipment evaluation. So he may have submitted one. Could I get a copy of that? Uh, I'll see if we have something like that. Okay. Um, he mentions it in his um, quote. Yeah, good. yeah. So if um, that helps. Yeah, I, I will say we have lost the elevator for a, few, a couple of days now where we've had days where people were not able to get to the upstairs because it stopped working. So it's definitely something has to happen because it's a deteriorating situation. Oh, absolutely. I'm just looking for details so I can understand exactly what they're recommending that really needs to be done here. Um, so if, if someone could please email that to me, um, I'd appreciate it. Linda or Sue, you have any other questions on this one? No, Sue, you're muted, so I don't know. No. Okay. All right, uh, Diane, you want to take the roll? Uh, Karen. You're muted, Karen. Just a second. I was. I had to find the mute. Uh, yes. Yes. Carolyn. Um, I'll abstain for now. Diane. Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, our last item is a motion uh, moved that the Board of Trustees approve Resolution 20 0 01, a resolution authorizing the payment of continuing expenses. Motion, so, Diane. Yes. Hello. Second. Second. Great. And uh, Linda. Yep. All right, Susan, you want to give us a run through on this one? Yeah, uh, this was recommended by the Ansel Glink Law Firm. They said that, and this was toward the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic when we weren't quite sure what we were facing in the Chicagoland area. So when uh, they brought it up, it, we were you know, thinking in terms of possibly board members would be getting sick with this. People would be hospitalized. It might be harder for boards to physically get together and meet or virtually get together and meet. And, um, you know, last month when we talked about having the meeting, it didn't sound like we would even have a quorum at that time. But, you know, we have managed to have a meeting now. Yeah. The whole purpose of it is just so that the expenses that have already, you know, we've already bought things, you have uh, in the bylaws, I have a $5,000 cap on my spending. So people buy things all the time that fit under that $5,000 cap. When the board is approving the payment of bills, you're just saying, yes, we understand that we are legally obligated to pay these bills and we're paying them. So there's nothing additional there. I don't care. This truly is completely a board matter. I am just as the director saying, it makes me feel bad when we don't pay our bills. I went and picked up another week's worth of bills yesterday at the post or today at the post office. Those bills will be sitting here till the next board meeting, which is like four weeks away. And they were sitting there for a week, some of them. So we'll be late on some of those bills. It would be a better money flow situation if I could be paying bills in an ongoing matter. But 
this particular resolution is really just during the pandemic and 30 days beyond. But truly, truly a board decision. I will not be offended in any way. This is just for the functioning of the library. Totally your call. Okay. Karen? I just had a question. We, we did not meet last month, uh, so we could not approve the bills last month as we usually would have done. So how did you handle that or what, what was the result of that? And did we incur any late charges as a result of that? Well, as I notified the board at the time um, that the meeting was canceled, I suggested that I just put those bills in the mail and that is what we did. So you, you approved, they actually went last month. So, okay. because yeah, we, we can't hold up, you know, some of these people are small businesses, uh, program people, musicians, things like that. You can't make them wait two months for their money. So yeah, the board did not tell me not to do it. So I did it. Mm -hmm. well, and we certainly don't want to incur any late fees uh, no. from utilities or otherwise. Um, okay, I, I just wanted to ask that question. Sure. Uh, Sue? I, I feel like in this time of crises, when the economy is in, in a terrible situation, that if the library has the opportunity to take care of fulfilling their commitments to the vendors, you know, I mean, I, it seems a no brainer to me. <laughs> Linda? I would say for right now, while we were, are doing virtual meetings and we are in a stay at home um, from the government, from the governor, that we, um, we go along with this and then change it back once we're finished and hopefully can have meetings. Yeah, it is, it is time limited. It says it's limited in time to the duration of the governor's stay at home order plus 30 days. So that will happen automatically. Uh, anybody else? Linda? Nothing? Patty? Nothing? I, I'm oh. kind of on the fence on this one. Um, you already have something. I don't think that... Uh, I, I think we're probably going to have a meeting next month. Mm -hmm. If we have it in person, it'd be great. I hope we can have it in person. But if not, that this uh, virtual seems to be working out okay. Now that we've got a, a few of the glitches worked out. Um, I'm not sure, uh, maybe there needs to be a larger conversation about payment of bills rather than one that's just a, uh, a limited duration. So I, I personally, I would have to say I would, uh, I would not go with this one since it looks like we can successfully meet next month. Karen? Um, you know, I, I would actually tend to agree. I think when uh, Ansel Kling suggested this, it might have seemed like a good idea because they didn't know that we would even be able to use something like Zoom. Uh, 30 days ago, I had never heard of Zoom. So, uh, and now I've used it about, uh, I don't know, 30 times, I don't know. Um, but- um, That's so why I blocked I think, back in it. Yeah, I think um, that it probably would have been a good idea were we not able to come up with this method of meeting which obviously it had a few glitches at the beginning, right. but it now seems to be working okay. So right. I don't think I don't think this measure is um, as necessary as it might have appeared a month ago. So I agree. I, I don't I don't know that we need to do it. Okay. Carolyn. Right. Yeah, I had a couple of questions. Susan, you mentioned something about Bill sitting at the post office. Yeah, our mail is being held. I go pick it up once or about once, I don't know, once every week or once every two weeks. Do we yeah. need to maybe- um, Here's today's. So the mail cannot be delivered unless it's picked up? It, it, well, there's we not- We don't have a mail library. slot. Yeah, we have halted all of our deliveries, yeah. Okay, well, I think that's on us. We're gonna have to uh, not want the mail to sit, especially since we wanna pay our vendors on time. So we may wanna See what else we might be able to do about that. Um, and then I had another question. Um, last month's bills, um, did we vote on that? I don't remember oh, the didn't meet, so you couldn't vote. So how you said the um, 
the I, you, I emailed everyone. I did. I told all of you that that's what I was planning to do, but I have found in talking to several of you that not all of you are reading your email very promptly. So I'm not sure all of you saw it before I did it. Well, I would think making a decision as a board should not be through um, an email. And if you don't get a response, then obviously we didn't see it. Um, well, Carolyn, it was, uh, let's, let's agree that last month was a very special case. It's not the point. I, it, it, I, it, think, I think that is the point. More, um, and there's going to be many more, but what I'm saying I don't think is, there's going to be many more like we had last month. Oh, it's not over yet. But what I'm yeah, trying to say is, all right, I'll let you talk. Go ahead, I'll let you talk. Thank you. You're what I'm trying to say is we were starting to believe that because we sent an email, that that's an automatic response. Email is not the best communication, especially when you need a direct answer. Texting, calling a cell is, is more, is, is faster and you definitely get an answer. I don't wanna see us think that because we sent an email that now we can act on it when in fact there wasn't any response so I just that's a worry for me and I just wanted to bring that up but um, regarding this whole process of considering authorizing I believe my understanding is to authorize the executive director um, to pay okay. unlimited continuing expenses during the coronavirus we need to remember that we are the trustees and um, according to the Illinois uh, compiled statutes, it clearly states the board shall have the exclusive control of the expenditures of all monies. And there really is no problem with this meeting. I mean, there's, there's always been some sort of uh, electronic way for us to communicate. Before even this technology, you know, the board members were reached by phone uh, to make decisions. So, I mean, it's just our responsibility as trustees that we need to do this. Uh, also, according to the um, Illinois statutes, the board cannot adopt a resolution that is inconsistent with the act, which means if we are the board and we're exclusively in control of expenditures of all monies, we cannot change that. So it's something we couldn't have done last month or if something else happens. Uh, we, that's just our respons responsibility. And then lastly, we oversee this gover government entity. And if the elected officials let the entity run itself, then the definition is unaccountability. The government would have zero oversight. And that's our responsibility. Again, the executive director does answer to the board she doesn't answer to herself. So legally, that's how this is explained. So we can't do this. You know, we just can't vote on this. Okay, great. Anybody else have any uh, comments on this one? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to ask Susan, um, how much, how many bills are unpaid if we do not put this through how many bills will there be i mean do you have an, any idea well, it would be like five hundred thousand dollars a month that's is roughly what it is each month uh you know you've got your payroll and then you've got your utilities and things like that so yeah i mean a good deal i, I don't exactly understand the argument that um, I do understand the board is exclusively in charge of spending the money, but the board has delegated that to me under the amount of $5,000. So once it's spent, the library is obligated to pay that bill. So, so you know, I don't know exactly how many, it, it's however many are in the check register, that's how many checks it would be per month. So I don't know, Greg, 20, 30, 40 maybe? Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the number of checks, but here, let me, uh, let me give you some additional information. We run about five hundred uh, or so thousand dollars a month in uh, total uh, cash payments. Um, of that, about three hundred thousand is uh, payroll and payroll related expenses, like the remiss remission of taxes and uh, uh, deposits with IMRF and and so on. Um, so, but you know, really, what you're talking about is about you know, is approving the release of $200,000 because by the time it gets to the board, 
that 300,000 in payroll and payroll related expenses has already been has already been paid because the way that we work with the our employees is that we pay them twice a month and then uh, we make sure that all the deposits, all the withholdings get paid to uh, the government, okay. Illinois and uh, federal, et cetera. Um, now, the remaining $200,000, we've actually gone out and we've accepted services or we've accepted products. And if, um, you know, if, for example, the board says, I'm not going to pay the expenses. The reality is, is that they could, you know, the vendors can sue us and the vendors can recover because we've actually received that service or product. So, um, you know, the resolution does not contemplate, you know, usurping anything from, um, from the board in, in terms of authority or power or anything like that. We uh, still expect to be fully accountable under this and present to you as we did tonight, a list of expenditures and financial statements and so on and so forth, all, all the types of things that you've had before. The only difference would be that in the event um, that the board cannot get together uh, or get together in a, in, a, uh, in a way that allows them to act, we'll have paid our vendors in order to keep, uh, to keep on uh, good standing with them and continuing to uh, continue to get electricity and continue to have the ability to order uh, library materials and, and and so forth. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really, um, it really has to do with the release of the funds and not the approval of the expenditures because we owe this money, whether or not the board approves the release of the funds. We have to release the funds at some point. So if we assume that we're going to be meeting next month, is there a reason to pass this resolution? Because we'll be taking care of our bills as usual. Well, uh, God forbid um, uh, four of you um, can't make the meeting uh, because you're either sick or taking care of a loved one who has uh, fallen ill. Uh, and those, those types of things, your health and the health of your loved ones are far more important than anything that's, that's going on here. Um, so if we don't have a quorum, um, we, you can't approve the payment of the bills. So what this is, is an insurance policy. Now the way it'll act, the way that we'll do it in, uh, you know, practically speaking is we will wait if we have a quorum, if we have a meeting and we have a quorum, we'll wait until the board approves before we release checks. Okay. But in the event that the board doesn't, uh, is unable to feel the quorum in order to act, then we still owe this money to the vendors. And I think then in that case, we would release the checks. No, you know, you in six years, I've never, no, in six years, I've never seen an action by the board where it's like, oh, let's not pay these bills. Okay, so for next month, we're going to assume that we're meeting, and we will assume that we're gonna pay the bills, mm -hmm. and so you will not, Susan will not pay them until it's decided that we're not meeting, is that it? Well, you, you may not know that you're not meeting until, you know, until we're all in this arena, and right. 10 counts noses and there's only three voting members. You know, in that case, you know, then, you know, it'll be, oh, wow, we, we need to do something different, you know? Um, and if we have this resolution in our back pocket, then we can go ahead and, and release the checks, uh, you know, to our vendors. Uh, so we can, as Susan said, you know, uh, we can keep them in business because a lot of them are you know, smaller type businesses, um, you know, some of them aren't, but some of them that aren't are too willing to cut our services off. You know, should we? No, uh, I certainly, uh, I certainly that? agree with paying them, but um, you're saying that Susan will not pay until we decide we're not having a meeting? 
And that was not my intention, actually. My intention was to go ahead and, and pay these, you know, the things that otherwise are, go are going to be late. We are going to have late fees on some of these. But, so. we only, but we only pay once a month and we'll continue to only pay once a month, you know, as is routine. Um, and that pay date is the third uh, Wednesday of every month. <laughs> you know, so the way that it works is we have the checks run and we have your signature uh, facsimiles that we, that we put on the checks, you know, to make them uh, negotiable. And then once the board says, okay, we, we approve the payment of the bills, the next day the envelopes are stuffed and, there's, and they're put into the mail. You know, that's, that's how it happens, you know. Um, but like I said, I've never seen the board refuse to pay anything. So the way this is written, uh, it is only during this uh, situation. Correct. Because we're clearly stating uh, during the declared state of emergency. Uh, so once the state of emergency is over, this is null. Right. right. Well, 30 day, you know, there's a 30 day grace at the end of it. Yeah, right. I mean, but we're pretty much. Well, it, it is possible that we could all get sick. I mean, it's possible. It's possible we don't have a quorum. I, I you know, we can't, we can't say it's not, that's not possible. We take a vote. Uh, just one last thing before you take a vote. You can't legally do this. Her resolution violates the Illinois state statutes. We oh, have, we, we are talking. We authorize them to pay all the time, Carol, yeah, Carolyn. No, we no, 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 no. We approve over the Over and over and over again. Okay, did you Every, see the resolution? Please yes. read also the first paragraph. The, hmm. Not limited to. You're giving her exclusive rights. Carolyn, why do you have anything. to keep bringing this same thing over and over and over again? We no, just it says you're giving her said, unlimited. It Can you stop says, talking when I talk? No, or let me know you when you're keep done. saying the same thing over, Carolyn. You have brought this up time and time again. It also says the library can authorize the director to, to, to perform no, these services. No, it doesn't. The state statutes part, specifically states but, Carolyn, you're you wrong. cannot take that. You're putting it wrong. Uh, what am I interpreting incorrectly? Please tell me. You're I've already had a lawyer statute. submit this. Tell me what's incorrect with that statute. Your interpretation of it. Okay, and what is what are you saying the interpretation of which statute are you looking at? What does it say? Your interpretation that says that uh, we have to personally approve each one of these bills every month. We've been through this, Carolyn. Yeah. Can we take a vote, please? Uh, yeah, and I, I can I just say something quick. Sure. Um, you know, I, I'm inclined not to vote for this just because I think it's unnecessary, not because I think it's illegal. I think it's fine, and I think a vote for this is perfectly fine. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary, but it, it's certainly acceptable to do this. Okay, you all say something to say. Me. Go ahead. Could it be possible? To, to say okay to this only because you're saying we need a quorum to vote. And if we are not hoping or, or anything says suggesting that we're not gonna have a quorum, but if we don't have a quorum, then it would pass. But well, we've got that in the, in about, the on middle it of the, uh, about the middle of the document. It says, whereas during the state of emergency, it may be difficult to schedule meetings and ensure that there is a quorum of members available. Okay. So it's, it's, it's pertaining to that situation. Okay. Yes, Sue. This is an emergency thing, you know? Let's just say yes, because it may not need to happen. It will probably, we hope, we pray it won't happen. Correct. But you know what? <laughs> we're, you know, look, I'm looking at you guys and we're all old and we could hey, wait a hey, minute. Hey, hey. Get this damn thing. So come on. <laughs> Give the library the opportunity to be able to run in case we're not around to do it. It's Thank not you. a big a no brainer. It's I mean, does it nobody really thinks they're gonna Susan's gonna do anything other than just like pay the vendors that, gas that bill. work for us. 
So I, I just think this is such a, a long-winded, way too long. We're all at home. We're all stressed. Come on, let's get this meeting going and let's get it over. Let's vote. Okay. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> Linda? Just one last thing. If Sorry. Susan cannot, for some reason, if she can't do it, then will Greg be able to pay the bills? Good point. Uh, I think it's... Well, that's a, that's a, how about that? Well, I'd have to, all, you know, four of you would have to be unavailable and I would have to be unavailable for I'm that. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Diane, let's take the vote on this. Okay, Karen. Uh, I'm going to vote no. I just resent that old comment from <laughs> Sue Wilty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There you okay. go, Sue. So see what you did? See what Carolyn? you did? Okay. No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Uh, I'm moderately old, not old, but yes, I'll say yes. This is a strange situation. Is it me? Yes. Yes. Kim? Uh, yes. And Sue? Yes. Right. All right. I believe that uh, concludes our meeting. Uh, next month, hopefully, hopefully we can meet at the board meeting. Uh, at the we're board old, but we're wise. And you know what? We have to have wisdom and know our capabilities and Absolutely. prepare for the future. All right. Um, Susan, could you please call me after the meeting? I have one question for you that's kind of, I don't need everybody else to hear. Okay. All right, and then we'll, uh, Susan and Greg, we're going to start our, our budget um, discussions, right? Hope, I, don't know, I don't know if we'll be able to next month, but clearly coming up, we're going to have to start those. So, um, and then I, I suggested that we, uh, in, in the future, we start meeting in the large uh, meeting room so that we can distance and uh, anybody oh. who wants to attend can distance, you know. Okay. I don't know if, if you guys uh, agree with that or disagree with that. We'll have to see what next month brings, but uh, right. if we need to do that, that's that's something we could do. Right. You know, I don't think we had an other on the agenda. We don't. No. But we were just going to. Could, could we all just say thank you very much to the library staff? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, we thank miss you, them. You, you, we love you. them. Yeah. And uh, nice. we hope they all stay well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Susan? We, we appreciate Susan, that. Uh, could you uh, look at, uh, I, I, I liked um, Dave Carabota's idea of, of, of uh, putting a flag on the screen. Sure. Could you, could you look at getting a, uh, a, 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 pa a, a, a flag? No, I think I have one in my basement. I'll try and get it out. I'll All bring right. it. Okay. All right. I have one. Table. There you go. Okay. Oh, okay. See, there but you go. We, That's fine. Maybe That's if we fine. just project it. Uh, that would that would suffice for next meeting. We just close with God bless America or something. Can I just add okay. Yeah, there you go. We could do it in the end. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. Do we speak okay. together? Does All right. not All right. you need your motion to adjourn? Uh, motion yeah. to adjourn. Motion motion to adjourn. adjourn. Aye. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Before we all hang up, can I just ask a question? Go right ahead, Carolyn. If this were still in this situation, we'll just meet through this webinar, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. Okay. okay good night, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Susan.